In this example, we will look at identification assets. Now, before we start with the example, let's go back to basics. When we look at our groups, we have a parent and they provide us with a separate financial statement. We have a subsidiary and they provide us with a separate financial statement. And then we recognize our group where we add all of the assets and liabilities plus minus journal entries into our group financials. Now, guys, very important, and I know I have explained this before, but I want to ensure that you understand this. Remember, when we recognize a liability in the separate records, we need to comply with our conceptual framework. Therefore, we need to meet the definition of our conceptual framework, plus, very important, our recognition criteria. It has to be probable and reliably measured. Then only, guys, may we recognize a liability or a provision and so forth. Now, what is a contingent liability? A contingent liability does not meet our recognition criteria. Therefore, we may not recognize it in the statement of financial position. Now, what does it mean not to recognize? You may not include a journal entry to credit a liability. You have to disclose this in a note in the financial statements for the readers to be able to identify. Now, important to understand this principle, guys. We disclose this in an additional note, but we do not recognize a transaction. Now, what do I mean with recognize a transaction? We do not debit an expense and credit a liability. We only disclose the detail in a note for our readers to understand. Now, guys, in our group, if we have a parent that purchases shares in a subsidiary, remember in our group, we've indicated that we may recognize in terms of IFRS 3, we may recognize a contingent liability what does it mean to recognize? We need to credit that account. If one, it meets the definition, and two, it has to be reliably measured. We do not have to meet the probability criteria in terms of IFRS 3. Therefore, if it meets one, the definition and the reliability we may recognize, recognize, we may credit a contingent liability at initial recognition, which is our at acquisition date. Now, guys, ensure that you understand this. Hey? Okay. Now, we go a little bit further. In this scenario, we have a parent purchase shares in the subsidiary, and the subsidiary has disclosed in a note a contingent liability. Now remember, they've disclosed in a note, therefore it's not recognized. Okay. Now guys, in our group, we may recognize this, therefore we credit our contingent liability. Remember, we will add this in our analysis of owner's equity calculation, and this will be part of our elimination journal, as this is our initial journal entry to recognize the business combination. Now, guys, in return for this contingent liability, important, in return for this contingent liability, IFRS 3 indicates to us that we may recognize an indemnification asset at initial recognition in our group but this is only in our group now what does it mean to recognize an indemnification asset in our initial elimination journal entry we include debit indemnification asset and guys this is not an intangible asset in terms of is 38 this is an indemnification asset that results from the contingent liability recognized in the separate financial statement of our subsidiary. Okay? 
So this will be our initial recognition. And remember, this should be at fair value. Why at fair value? The basic principles of IFRS 3 is the consideration paid by the parent should be at fair value and the assets and liabilities should be at fair value. Therefore, this should be at fair value. Now, what is our subsequent measurement? Remember, subsequent will be at year end. We need to determine what is the indemnified item based on the note disclosed by our subsidiary. Okay. Now, guys, let's have a look at this example. We have Color Limited, that is the subsidiary. And again, we have Italia Limited, which is the holding company. Acquisition date, 1 January 2011. Now, Color Limited disclosed a contingent liability. Remember, disclose, therefore, this is in a note of 450000 in their financial statement on 1 January. Relating to a court case involving a patent right not meeting industry standards. The claim represents a present obligation, but at this point in time, the attorneys of color are of the opinion that it is unlikely to lead to an outflow of economic benefits. Now, guys, you see it's unlikely. Therefore, they've recognized only a contingent liability. In then note, or not recognized, guys, they've disclosed. Okay. The 450,000 is the fair value of the claim. Therefore, guys, do we need to use the 450? Yes. Why? Because this is our fair value and we need to include our contingent liability and our indemnified asset at fair value. As part of the purchase agreement, the shareholders have guaranteed to reimburse color. 40% of the claim. Therefore, guys, the fair value of the indemnification asset will be the 450,000 times 40%. And then they indicate on 31 December 20.11, which is our year end, the court case has progressed to such an extent that it is virtually certain. Now, guys, if it is now virtually certain, compared to previously, it was unlikely. Do you agree with me that in this separate financial statement now, guys, in the separate financial statements of Color Limited, we may recognize a provision. Why? Because we meet the definition as well as the recognition criteria. To pay an amount of 550000 Color Limited recognized the provision in its financial statement at year end. And the related transaction have been recorded correctly in Colors financial statements. Okay, guys, now important. Let's have a look at this. In the separate financial statements now of Color, and I'm going to include headings again. We have our parent, Italia. We have our subsidiary, Color. And we have our group. Now, remember, we've indicated on initial recognition. Subsidiary disclose the note, and in terms of IFRS 3, we may recognize debit and indemnification asset, which is the 450,000 times the 40%. And we can credit a contingent liability to the value of 450,000. Guys, important, this is in our group. And this will form part of your elimination journal entry. And you need to remember to include this in your analysis of owner's equity. Remember, this is purely calculation. Okay. Now, subsequent measurement, guys. This is important. In the separate financials of our subsidiary, our subsidiary debit and expense in our profit and loss and credit a provision in our statement of financial position to the value of 550,000. Okay. Remember, compared to initial, they've only disclosed 
a note. No recognition occurred. Now important, what do we do in our group? Let's think about this. Remember when we perform our group financials, we need to add all of the assets of our parent plus the assets and liabilities of our subsidiary into our group. Now, do you agree with me, guys? If we recognize a indemnification asset to the value of 180,000 in our group, but now they've determined that this should actually be a provision and we've recognized a contingent liability. We're going to double count somewhere because we will have to include this 550,000 in the group's profit and loss. We have included 180,000. Remember, this is an asset and a liability of 450,000. Why? Because we add Assets plus liabilities of parents plus assets plus liabilities of subsidiary. And now we add this liability of 550,000 in our group. This will result in a total liability to be recognized of 450 and 550, meaning a total liability of 1 million. But guys, this is not fair presentation of the details. The actual outflow will only be this 550,000. Therefore, we now need to reverse this journal entry in our group. Important that you understand this principle, guys. And please let me know if you still don't understand this. We now need to reverse that journal entry. Therefore, if we reverse that journal entry, we need to then debit the contingent liability in the statement of financial position remember we're busy with our group and credit the indemnified asset and the balancing figure we will then credit to our profit and loss expenses why remember guys in the group the actual outflow will only be the difference the difference between our 450 and our 180. Therefore, we take out that 450,000. We take out our indemnified asset and the remaining amount will go to our profit and loss in our expenses to ensure that the net effect will be the 550 in our profit and loss minus the 270 and this will be 180 in our group profit and loss.